Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our text for today is uh, on our screens. Uh, it's taken from John chapter 1. I invite you to join with me in reading. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. He was with God in the beginning. The Word became flesh and made its dwelling. Seen his glory, the glory came from the truth. People of God, people whose faith is in Christ Jesus, Emmanuel, Lord, Savior. Uh, as we mentioned earlier today, uh, the theme for our midweek services has been who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven. To continue looking at that theme, our focus this morning is upon the impossible becomes reality because it is necessary. The impossible becomes reality because it is necessary. Now, it always kind of interests me when I read through the Gospel of Mark and especially the Christmas narrative, and then compare it to the Gospel of John, uh, how there are some similarities, but also uh, a little bit different uh, twist to things. In the Gospel of Luke, as he talks about the birth of Jesus, Luke paints a much quieter scene, uh, a stillness within the stable, uh, and then out on the hillsides of Bethlehem, in the quietness of the night, then suddenly the nighttime sky is split apart with angels. The tremendous messages of God's salvation for all people as the stillness of the night is suddenly burst forth with a uh, immeasurable joy. But John's, St. John's description of the birth of Jesus is similar to the angels bursting through the skies. In the beginning was the word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. He was God from the very beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made. John begins the Gospel with a startling, a breathtaking event, uh, similar to God creating the universe, as uh, suddenly the universe became alive. Well, St. John, God gave the Holy Spirit uh, had St. John use a term that was commonly used among uh, most of the Greek-speaking worlds of the day 2,000 years ago. It was a term that was held in very high regard. And the term is the word. The word. When the Greek-speaking peoples used the term the word, they were referring to a very powerful concept. The word was creative. The word was powerful. The word had incomparable wisdom. You might say that the word was the cause for all of the universe and all of life. But the Greek-speaking people had a problem. For them, the word was an impersonal force some kind of power, kind of like the uh, force of gra gravity. In some ways, it's very similar to the Star Wars type of thinking, the force be with you, you know. And, uh, and it's a kind of new age concept of saying that when all the planets get lined up in just exactly the right order, then there is a special force or a power that will be made available to you as long as you line up with that force. The problem is I can never figure out where I'm supposed to be standing in order to line up with that force. But it was an impersonal force, an impersonal power. It's similar also to the view that many people have in our society today that the universe came into existence by an explosion caused by uh, a mysterious mixture of chemicals and materials, all very powerful, but also very, very impersonal. As St. John begins writing his gospel, he begins in the beginning. The word was there. But instead of an impersonal force, instead of an impersonal batch of chemicals, the 
word was God. God the word created all the universe, brought it all into existence. And this universe that God created was filled with light and life. And so God, a very personal person, being, far greater than any natural force, personally called everything into existence. But that's not the end of the story. The Word, God himself, stepped into the history of the world that he had created, stepping into it as a flesh and blood person. God who cannot be seen becomes a flesh and blood person who was seen. St. John expands upon this concept in his first letter. And he describes seeing God in the flesh. And he describes it in this way. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our own eyes, which we have looked at and our hands have touched. Do you understand? Seeing, hearing, touching a flesh and blood person. God himself becoming flesh and blood. This we proclaim, St. John says, concerning the word of life. An impersonal force or power? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Instead, the almighty God in person, in a flesh and blood person. That's the miracle of Christmas. That's what we call incarnation. God coming into the flesh. As St. John describes the Christmas miracle, it's almost like the stage of a rock concert. Uh, the stage is in darkness and all the people are gathering there and the spectators are there. Then all of a sudden, uh, floodlights and laser lights and fireworks and smoke and thunderous sounds completely surround everybody who is there for the concert. And as those lights and the smoke slowly fade away, there standing in the very middle of the stage is the star of the show. You see, Luke gives us a time to quietly meditate upon the birth of Jesus in the stillness of night. But St. John, he has us marvel at the tremendous power of the birth of Jesus. Not just the power of creation when the world began, but the power of Almighty God himself suddenly stepping onto the stage of history. But that's impossible. Yes, it is. God becoming a flesh and blood human being? No way. The Word becoming a limited person? That could never happen. You see, that was the thinking of every Tom, Dick, and Mary who lived 2,000 years ago. There was no way that God could become or would become a flesh and blood person. But the impossible became a reality. The impossible became a reality. God accomplished what is totally inconceivable to us. The impossible becomes a reality because it was necessary. For as St. John also tells us that in Jesus we see not only the glory of God, we also see his grace and truth. Grace and truth identify why this impossibility needed to become a reality. The truth is that even though God created us in his glorious image, and even though he filled us with life and all kinds of blessings, we've broken that image. We have lost his glory. As sinners, we need forgiveness. As sinful people, we need rescue from the power of death. Uh, during, uh, a family was having their uh, family devotions one evening, and uh, they were talking about the things that they were thankful for that day. And one of the girls, uh, whose uh, chore it was to take the trash out every week uh, and then bring it in, uh, the trash cart in afterwards, uh, she said uh, she was thankful for the people who picked up the trash. And then she continued saying, can you imagine what our house would look like 
if there was no way to get rid of the garbage. As bad as it would be to have our house filled with garbage, imagine how devastating it is in our lives when we remain packed full of our sins. The reality is we need forgiveness. We need forgiveness. We need to have a way that our sins can be removed and taken away. Of course, there are those in our society today who try to ignore their sin or claim that their sin doesn't exist. They refuse that they, to admit that they do any wrong or if they do make mistakes, uh, it's no big deal. Uh, they're kind of like the hoarder who is fine with piles of trash all around the house as long as they can uh, navigate their way uh, through all the clutter and the debris. Everything is fine with them. But they simply do not realize how confining all this trash is, how it limits their lives. God, the Word, the Almighty One, makes the impossible become a reality. That is, as Almighty God, He becomes a flesh and blood human being. He does the impossible because it was necessary. It was necessary for us. God definitely knows how our sin chokes our lives and chokes the life out of us. He knows that our sin covers our lives with darkness and despair. And that's why he became a flesh and blood human being. To suffer, to die, to provide the forgiveness so that our sins and our darkness can be removed. So the light of his grace and his truth and his mercy may fill our lives. God made the impossible become a reality because it was necessary. It was a terrible, miserable, wintry day, freezing rain, turning to ice. Uh, the worker who was driving the garbage truck had to stop at every trash cart, get out of his truck, go to the cart, load it up into the back of the truck, and as the rain came down and his uh, coat was uh, wet and frozen, a man was bringing his trash cart out to the curb just as the garbage truck drove up. And uh, the man commented to the workers, what a lousy day to have to be working outside. The worker simply replied, it needs to be done. Somebody's got to do it. It's my job to get it done. It's my job to get it done. There was another day of terrible weather. Storm clouds blocked out the sun. Severe and menacing darkness covered the landscape, lightning, thunder, an earthquake. And out of the darkness, one piercing cry, it is finished. It is finished. The job is done. Forgiveness now is available for all people. Forgiveness now is available for you and me. Forgiveness that removes the garbage of our sin. Somebody had to do it. Somebody had to do it. But there was only one who could truly accomplish it. It was a task that only God himself could complete. And so the one who is filled with grace and truth is the one who removes the garbage of our sin so that we might have life and light. The impossible becomes reality because it was necessary. Almighty God becomes flesh and blood to bring us the forgiveness that we need. Who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven. The word who created all the universe became flesh to dwell among us with his grace and truth. He is one who declares to us, I forgive you. I forgive you. Each of your sins, all of your sins, so that you can live in my peace. Amen. So be it, Lord Jesus. Amen.